Hello everyone, I'm glad to be back again. My name is Dr. John Nabebe, the president of the Judea Abebe Art Foundation and the medical director of the Judea Abebe Fertility Center. Today we'll be talking about, uh, we'll be continuing our series um, that we started uh, some time ago on the factors that affect um, IVF success. All right, like I said before, there are many people who are considering going for IVF, but they are scared after investing so much in the process, what is the guarantee that I will achieve success? So we'll be talking about those factors that affect um, the success rate. The first we talked about some two weeks ago was the age factor, which affects the quality of the eggs, all right? And then the second factor we considered was the male factor the quality of the sperm. Now, these two factors would affect the quality of the embryo. Today, we'll be considering the third factor, which is the, the womb, the endometrium, all right? That is where the embryo is transferred into, all right? Even if you have a very fantastic, high-quality embryo, if the womb is not okay, then implantation will not occur, all right? The embryos are transferred into the endometrium, all right, that is the inner lining of the womb, and then 14 days after, you expect them to be implantation. Now, what are the factors in the womb, or what we call the carrier, that can affect the outcome of an IVF process? Now, anything that affects the lining of the womb, it could be an infection, as in endometritis, all right? It could be the presence of submucous fibroids, fibroids that are inside the womb, all right? Not all fibroids will affect pregnancy, but when you have what we call submucous fibroid, fibroids that are occurring in the lining of the womb, that can affect um, implantation. What else can affect? When you have what we call adenomyosis. Adenomyosis means that the lining of the womb, the tissue that lines the inside of the womb is now in the muscle of the womb, in the malmetrum. All right, once you have adenomyosis, it, make, it becomes very difficult for implantation to take place in such patients, all right? Or patients who develop endometrial fluid, all right? Once there's endometrial fluid, then implantation becomes very difficult, all right? Now, these are some of the reasons why a woman, after you have had the transfer, all right, implantation would not occur. If it's due to infection, the treatment is to give antibiotics, and that is why we routinely give antibiotics to all women who are going through an IVF uh, process. If it's a submucous fibroid, the treatment will be to take out the fibroid before the patient goes through um, an IVF program. If it's an adenomyosis, again, treatment can either be medical or surgical. You can either debug the uterus to reduce the thickness or you give medications to help to um, shrink the, the womb, all right, to help improve the outcome. If it's due to endometrial fluid, all right, the treatment is to find out why that woman is having fluid inside the womb during an IVF process and sort it out. It could be either due to infection, like I said before, or it could be due to fluid in the fallopian tube that is tracking down into the endometrium. These have to be sorted out before the patient uh, goes through an IVF program. All right, so these um, is the, the factors, the endometrial factors that can affect the outcome of an IVF program, all right? So whatever it is, just know that we are mindful of these factors, and then when you go through a treatment program, we would ensure that all of these factors are taken care of to increase your chances of getting pregnant. I have no doubt in my mind that someone has been educated today. See you again next time when we come again with another of our series. Have a wonderful day. God bless you.